In this practical, we'll be investigating how to discover the specific heat capacity of a material. Now, specific heat capacity is simply the energy required to raise one kilogram of the material by one degree Celsius in temperature. And it's governed by an equation. That equation is E equals mc delta theta, which simply means that energy is equal to mass times C, which is the specific heat capacity, or SHC, times the change in temperature. The triangle sign is delta, and that means change in, and the theta stands for temperature. Now, to generate the data we need to put into this equation, we need to use the equipment here. The first thing we're going to look at is what material we're testing, and today we're going to look at copper. It's a really common choice because it has quite a low SHC, and it's readily available in schools. We need to know how much the copper weighs, or the mass of the copper, I should say. So, if I put it on the balance here, I can see that it weighs 1,011 grams. Now, in physics, we generally use kilograms, not grams, so I need to convert that to 1.01 .01 kilograms. The next thing I need to know is the change in temperature, and for that, I need to know an initial and a final temperature. I'm going to measure that using simply a thermometer, and you can see that the copper has got two holes in it, one for the thermometer and one for the heater. All I do is place the thermometer in and read it, and I can see that it's about 22 degrees Celsius at this moment in time. Now, we need to heat this copper up in some way, and we're going to use an electrical heater. It's connected to a power pack, as you can see here, and it simply turns electrical energy into heat energy. Now, this must be lubricated before you put it into the hole in the copper because when the copper heats up, it will expand and the heater might get stuck. Now, this heater is what's going to provide the energy for the copper to heat up, but it's not as simple as simply reading an energy reading off. We need to work out what that energy is depending on the voltage of the machine and the time that it's left for. So, the heater is connected to an ammeter and a voltmeter. That's then connected to the power pack, and using these two, we can work out the power of the heater, because power equals current times voltage. Therefore, if I multiply the reading on the ammeter, the current, and the reading on the voltmeter, the voltage, I work out the power of the circuit. Energy is equal to power multiplied by time. The longer you turn the power on, the more energy you have. Therefore, I need to use a stopwatch to work out how long I've run the experiment for and multiply the power supply by the time to work out the energy. The final thing to note is that you need to think about some safety aspects. Now, this copper is going to be heated up. It will get quite hot. We need to make sure we're working on a heat-proof mat to not damage the table underneath. You shouldn't be touching this once it's started to heat up because it will get to a temperature that could possibly burn you. And you should put the copper inside an insulating material such as this belt. That firstly keeps it a little bit safer, but also stops the heat escaping to the outside, thus making your results slightly less reliable. So all I need to do now is turn on the power pack and the stopwatch and start collecting my results. It should probably take about 5 to 10 minutes to get about 20, 30 degree Celsius temperature change. So the copper's been heated for about 10 minutes now and we can see that the temperature's risen to about 44, 45 degrees. And that's plenty, so we can stop the experiment and we now have our final temperature. I can add this to the rest of the data that I collected before the experiment and put these numbers into the equation to work out the specific heat capacity. You might, if you wanted to, repeat this experiment a couple more times to ensure your data is even more reliable.